Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Shklov, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today, we're going to talk with Amanda Chang, a lawyer who traces her roots across the sea to Korea. Amanda is of counsel to the law firm of Clay Chapman, Iwamura Police, and Nervell here in Honolulu, Hawaii. I've asked Amanda to share her perspectives and insight as a Korean American attorney in Hawaii. Aloha, Amanda, how are you? Aloha, good to see you, Mark. Yeah, good to see you. And uh, you, you identify as a, a Korean American, and I, I wanna ask you a little bit about that and tell me a little bit about your personal heritage as Korean American. What, what does that mean to you personally? Um, I am, I guess, ancestry wise, I'm 100% pure Korean, but nationality wise, I'm an American citizen. <laughs> so combining the two, my ancestry and my current citizenship makes me Korean American. But I was born in Korea, Seoul, Korea, and came to Hawaii as an immigrant with my parents. When they immigrated, I came as their you know, three children uh, with them, you know, I came just a package deal. Your parents go, you go, right? So I moved because my parents moved, especially my father's side family lived in the U.S. in Hawaii since the 60s. So my father was the last one to join. So I came here in 1983 as a high schooler at Pearl City High School. Okay, wow. So, uh, yeah, so you, you've combined both your Korean heritage and birth with Hawaii and America. And, and that's how you see yourself, that Korean American, that, that, that's what brings that identity to you. Correct, I could almost say I'm Korean Hawaiian, but nobody will believe me, so I'm <laughs> Korean American. Okay, and, and you're, you're also an attorney and you're, you're a Korean American attorney practicing law in Hawaii. What kind of law do you practice? You know, I've been doing immigration law since day one. So I, when I was in law school, I wanted to do, I wanted to come up with a like law that is right for me. So I wanted to have a two criteria. One, I wanted to use my language. I can speak three languages. So I wanted to use my language. And two, I wanted to have an equal gender representation among my clients. So if I were to go say, for example, corporate law, criminal law, more likely than not, I'll have more male clients. Whereas if I were to go family law, immigration law, half and half, you know, like kind of even. So I wanted to work with both gender, especially women, if I could. So I was more interested in family and immigration. And boom, all of a sudden, Mr. James Stanton, who was the founding um, attorney for this law firm, now they change from uh Stanton Clay and all that name. Now we are actually Clay Iomura, Polis and Nerval. Chapman retired. So okay. I was recruited by uh, Mr. Stanton, who founded this law firm that I'm of counsel at this point. He was an adjunct pr professor teaching immigration law at the University uh, School of Law, William S. Richardson School of Law. I took immigration law from him and he offered me a job. And as a Law clerk, I thought, oh my God, this guy is perfect because I was interested in immigration and family. He did immigration and family. So I say, this is it. I got a like a the ticket. Like, right? I won the lottery ticket. So that's how I got involved in immigration and family. But I don't do much family law anymore. Uh, but I mainly specialize in immigration law thanks to Mr. Jim Stanton. He's my forever teacher. You know, that, that's interesting. And, and you also trace your own background to immigration to Hawaii. And, you know, there's a, there, there, was, there is Korean immigration in Hawaii. What, what, what is the background of, of basic Korean immigration? When did Korean people start coming to Hawaii? Why did they come here? And what attracted them to Hawaii? What, 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 what's the background? It's a sad and happy story to tell. It goes back 120 years ago. One, uh, what, 1903, January 13th, is when 120 Koreans came to Hawaii Harbor in Gaelic, um, you know, it's a ship called Gaelic. Um, 100, 
and two people started the first immigration of any Korean coming to the U.S. In fact, any you know immigration to any foreign land from Korea. Period. Back then, Korea was a dynasty. Some people call it Joseon Dynasty. Some people call it Lee Dynasty, E Dynasty. But 1903 is a kind of sad. Kind of historically in Korea, where Japanese occupation colonizing Korea occurred officially 1910, 1910, which is like about what 130 years ago, about. But a few years before, there was a process. It doesn't just happen one day, another country, uh, you know, colonizing another a country, colonizing another country. So 1903, a lot of Koreans, a lot of Christians, in fact, left Incheon, uh, which is a port city near um, Seoul, Korea. They left a uh, Korean soil for better life and to mm. work. And to also, uh, Christianity in Korea was really uh, starting at that point and really rare. So a lot of uh, church members of Incheon area and some other areas too, but mostly Incheon area came that was our first generation of Korean immigration in 1903. In fact, we just celebrated 120th anniversary of Korean immigration in January this year. So that's how all started. And then a lot of people came until 1940s. And then there was a stop of uh, immigration from Asia altogether. And then second wave of immigration started in uh, late 1960s. So second wave of immigrants started to come in 1960s until now. I am and, part of the second wave. And and the original, I mean, they're, they're, they're looking for a better life. I mean, and that seems to be a common theme of immigrants coming to Hawaii or coming to the United States is, is looking for, for a better life. And, and did, did they find it here in Hawaii? And and are are they are, are they still interested? Are Koreans still want to come to Hawaii? Um, that's a good question, and you asked few, so I'll answer one at a time. So <laughs> those who first came in 1903, a lot of them thought, okay, I'm going to work hard and make money, and I'm going to return back home to marry and to start a family. Majority of 102 people who came to the uh, to Hawaii's shore in 1903, all male, single a lot of them, not too many families. So they wanted to work hard and make some money and go home. But then, as I said to you a little earlier, 1910, there was no Korea. Japanese took over, so there was no home to return. So Hawaii became the uh, temporary, like, a, what do you call it? Independence movement um, um, space where Shanghai was one and Hawaii was another big uh, city or country where independence movement of among Korean ancestries trying hard to raise money and to take back their country from Japan. So early immigration was like that. It was about no home to return, independence movement. And then now, I think um, 60s and on, Korea also went through Korean War after the Japanese occupation ended in 1945. You know, South Korea was born in 1948, but then two years after, there was a Korean War between the North and the South. So when war ended in 1953, Korea had nothing. It just became a new country, South Korea being a democratic country, North Korea being the, you know, communist country. But other than that, they had nothing. Everything was destroyed. It was uh, right after the war. Korea had to build their country from scratch, literally from 1953. So in the 60s and 70s and 80s, a lot of people came for better life and better education. And my parents being one, my family, my mom and dad joined my father's side family who was established by then in the 80s when we came. But my father is de delayed his immigration until he decided that, you know what, for better education for my children, I'm going to join my rest of my family. So that's how we came. So I think, as you asked, um, yes, better, better life. It came. And then I think Koreans flourished ever since they came, I think, in the U.S. So it's it's been beneficial. And it's been a good positive step for Im immigration. Is it is it hard 
for Koreans to to immigrant? Are they in, immigrate to Hawaii or to the United States now? Is there a, any any um, restrictions or problems with that at all? Um, you know, immigration law. Since I'm doing immigration law, immigration to any country is not an easy matter. Changing your life, you know, from one country looting to another country is not an easy thing, but immigration law is ever-changing federal law, just like tax law. I mean, it changes every single time you have a chance. Immigration law, the same. So the rule changes, policies change. When the president changes, we have a whole set of new attitudes and policies and rules and such. So immigration in general, I would say, is not easy. However, we do have a lot of treaties between Korea and the U.S. and, of course, U.S. with other countries, but a lot of them are remaining the same. I mean, I've been doing this since 2000, so it's been 23 years. There are laws that change so many times, I cannot even remember how many. There are some laws that stay put from the beginning until now, no changes. So there is a, you know, both. But overall, immigration law is a very um, ever-changing so I never get bored because I cannot be bored. I have to keep up every time I have a chance. Continuing legal education for immigration lawyer is the name of the game. Okay, yeah. And, you know, you talked about the differences between uh, North and South Korea uh, also as maybe being a motivating factor <laughs> for, for immigration. And You know, I... Turned off my cell phone, but not in my office. I'm sorry. I don't know how to do this. Sorry. I don't know how to turn this off. You know what? I'm going to do this. Okay, sorry. I manually hung up the phone. Sorry. Go ahead. Ash, are you okay? Ash? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you, you mentioned, uh, Amanda, that, you know, the differences between North and South Korea motivate a lot of people to move uh, to the United States and to Hawaii, and that things have been beneficial. How, you know, what, what, what is the view of Korean Americans towards what's happening in Korea, North and South, and major issues? Uh, and I, I have some follow-up questions. I mean, I, I just don't understand that you know the difference. Why is what North Korea one way and South Korea another? What what's motivated? Is anything cultural? I mean, I, I know I've asked a bunch of questions, but what are your thoughts? I think the biggest issue of Korea is the fact that we have two Koreas, South and North. So the biggest issue is unification. Uh, both South and North Korea share the same culture, same language, same ancestry. Um, there is no difference except for political system, you know, North Korea being communist, South Korea being, you know, a democratic uh, country, the ideology and two different regime, that's the only difference that's separating. What's so sad is, you know, Korea has been separated since 1953 at the end of the war until now. There are people who have families separated because of the uh, two Koreas and you cannot freely go. There are some exchanges of uh, relatives seeing each other with a prearranged uh, setting and time and place between the two Koreas. But I think the biggest issue facing um, or being faced by Korea is unification. And I hope, this is my personal hope, that the Korea will be unified and as a one country sooner than uh, later. I really hope that is going to happen before I die. And you know what, North Korea, they are very closed uh, community, closed the country. Not too many people know anything much about Korea, North Korea, except for their missile testing and, you know, ballistic missile hitting, you know, possibly Hawaii. They could, we have some news, but you know what, North Korea is such a closed country. I've been to North Korea one time as a um, South Korean um, government sponsored me and other Korean Americans to go uh, as an effort to make a unification happen. So I visited North Korea one time as a like group suggest uh, sponsored by South Koreans and North Koreans together. But other than that, I don't have any experience or 
you know, a knowledge about what's going on, except for what you hear, what you, what you read on the news. Whereas South Korea, I go to South Korea for at least once, if not every other, once a year, if not every other year. In fact, I'll be there in September because there is a international association of Korean lawyers where there are two common factors that you are Korean and your attorneys all over the world. They get together every two years in Seoul and then we exchange network and we'll have a legal seminars, continuing education and et cetera. So because of COVID, it was closed down for a couple of years, but now they're reopened. So I'm due to uh, go back to Korea, South Korea. But you know what? South Korea is an amazing country, not to mention that they're top 10 world economic powerhouse. But at the same time, from 1953, after the war ended until now, we are only talking, what, 70 years exactly? Last 70 years, they became a country which you used to get. They were used to getting international help because they had nothing. They were getting help from other countries, including U.S. But now South Korea is a country that gives and donates their resources and manpower to other countries. So I'm really uh, proud that South Korea, my home country, my back home country, is in a position to help out. And another thing that I kind of recently um, learned is that South Korean government, they don't forget who they are indebted to, including Korean War veterans from Hawaii and from the mm -hmm. U.S., from everywhere. Korean government makes an effort to bring these soldiers in their 80s and 90s and hundreds every year to visit Korea, oh, wow. fully pay for from room and board, first class everywhere. And they treat these people and say thank you with heartfelt gratitude. And they don't forget what they owe to their country, uh, Korean country, for having the freedom and democracy. And, and the fact that people like, you know, like Japanese uh, American in the US, in Hawaii, or Chinese or Caucasian, they all went to fight. So we have a Korean War Memorial at the Capitol. I don't know whether you know, but there we have a, Hawaiian soldiers who fought in Korea, and I just went to pay respect on the 6th of June, because that's a Korean Memorial Day. So Korean government, you know, consulate here, they put together a nice ceremony and luncheon, and we had a, like seven local, you know, ex-Korean um, uh, war veterans attending the uh, event. That was really memorable for me. You know, I, I can't help but think, uh, you know, we, we talk about the difference between the two Koreas, North and South, and, you know, you say it's the political system, and boy, you know, if, if, only, if only North Korea could, could move closer to what the system is in South Korea, it would seem like it would just be such a better place. Uh, and... I don't. I, I I I hear what you're saying about uniting. I I wonder if that'll that'll ever happen. As long as the the political system in North Korea is so divisive. So I mean, I I I hear you. I hear you talk about that. And that, and I've been to uh, South Korea many times. Really like it. It's it's even with the threat of North Korea, the people are just so nice and and friendly and. And and maybe that's they learn that from being subject to those threats is that's a way of to live life, and so it goes beyond politics to me. Uh, now I, I wanted to, to move on a little bit. You you mentioned that uh, there's you know Koreans who are attorneys and you get together, but there's it, I've noticed also that there seems to be a very strong Korean American legal community in Hawaii, and I wanted you. Talk about that a little bit. What, what's that about? How did that come about? Yeah. What, why? How, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we do have uh, sub chapters or sub sections within the HSBA, Hawaii State Bar Association. Korean American Bar Association Hawaii is one of the, you know, subsection of the Hawaii State Bar Association. And believe it or not, there are Korean American Bar Association we are Hawaii, so it's a Kaba is with an H at the end, but there's a, so many Kabas throughout the whole country, believe it or not. And we sometimes communicate, but I think Korean Americans um, and then being an attorney 
combined, you know, I think there is a certain amount of connectivity, association, and closeness where we formed this entity way before I became an attorney. I think it started in 1970s sometime. And there are members, they don't have to be Korean, by the way. I had a, um, a Don Speffer, for example, he's half Japanese, half Caucasian, but he loves Korean so much where he became one of the Korean American Bar Association board member and officer. So it doesn't have to be Korean, uh, literally uh, ancestry wise, but we do have, you know, um, meetings and board meetings and projects and uh, things we do to help out. How can we help out Korean American community in the state of Hawaii uh, in terms of legal system? You know, what can we do to uh, assist and to be a bridge between the legal community and Korean American community. So our job is to connect the two. And we used to do legal seminars, voter registrations, and also being, um, you know, a, a precinct officer volunteering. I mean, you get paid a little bit of money, but you volunteer all day on the, um, you know, voter uh, election day at the uh, uh, polling site. So we did many different things like that. And then when other um, bar uh, sections from Korea, for example, come here, we are one of the front line preparing and welcoming those people. For example, Seoul Bar Association is coming at the end of the month. So we will be the one who's kind of preparing as a part of the HSBA, but Korean American Bar Association Hawaii. So t tell me about that. Why, what, what is the relationship with the Seoul Bar Association? Why is it important? Why is it meaningful? You know, Seoul Bar Association uh, is a, has a sister relationship. We have a friendship agreement between Seoul Bar Association and Hawaii State Bar Association, as you may know, and you, as you already well know. So every 10 years, they have a friendship agreement being renewed, and this is going to be the third time, if I'm not mistaken. So Seoul Bar Association has been coming here for the last 30 years visiting, and we're exchanging our um, members and gifts and ideas, knowledge. In fact, part of our uh, visit, their visit uh, of, uh, of the state of Hawaii includes uh, legal seminars, us talking about legal topics that may be of interest to us and Soul Bar, and Soul Bar will be the same. What may be of interest to us and to them, they're going to exchange at the UH Law School. So a Soul Bar Association is coming as a, a part of the legal community in global, um, you know, the whole world, we have this uh, exchange program, getting to know each other, learning from each other, exchanging with each other. That's why it's so important. And I, I sense there's this cultural pride and feeling of uh, closeness that maybe connects all of these groups and, and that you include everybody. It's inclusive. And, yes. And it, right? And, 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 the Seoul Bar Association, when they come here, uh, it, it develops relationships. Is that is that kind of what what the the outcome is look looked for? That's correct. That's correct. They come and they will exchange their ideas and their presence. You know what's new to them, what's um, what's of a concern to them. You know, uh, it's such a global neighborhood. We are like so next to each other. Not only we share the same Pacific Ocean, we share the same moon and the sun and the stars, right? So we're, we th we seem far away from each other, but in fact, we're really close together. So I think we're sharing each other, to me, is very meaningful. And, and you know, it, it's interesting that they want to come here. I mean, they see the value of this also. The Soul Bar Association, they don't have to come to Hawaii. They, they don't have to, to leave Seoul. But they they are seeking the opportunity to connect and network with Hawaii lawyers with right is is and and be be part of that group and make those strong connections, which to me is is a great thing. It's it's a it's a great experience and it, it's it makes for like you were saying, you know, the world to be closer. That's right. I really think that it, just like what you said, they don't have to do anything. They are busy with their lives, their work, and their community, but yet they go out of their way to reach out. And it takes about 10 hours to fly out here, you know, and out of their busy schedule. But they want to keep up the tradition of having friendship agreement 
a sister relationship with the Hawaii State Bar Association and exchanging ideas and I mean each other's company and networking and sharing what is uh, you know, important to them may be relevant to us and vice versa. So I think it's really a good thing. And it also, I mean, it, it speaks of our Hawaiian culture too. I mean, uh, our Korean American Hawaiian culture where, where we show aloha back and forth, we get together, we maybe uh, help break down some of barriers or we get to know each other better. So I think it's, it's good all, all the way around. And it's good that our Bar Association, Hawaii Bar Association is involved in this. Um, and so I, I like I like what's happening. That's it's a very good experience, I think, for everybody to yes. be involved. Yes. Um yes. go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I mean Hawaii State Bar Association, just like what you said, is Hawaiian culture is also uh, very inclusive and they're very inviting and welcoming. It shows through the body of uh, you know, HSBA. We are very inclusive, welcoming. And then we're doing the same thing to the uh, Seoul Bar Association uh, directors as well. And and what I, you're you're saying that everybody is invited to participate. You, you know, Korean American culture in Hawaii is inclusive for everybody. That's correct. And you know the legal topics that's going to be presented at the UH Law School. Uh, that's also um, uh, on Wednesday, twenty eighth at 2 o'clock at the UH Mood Court room is open to everybody. There's a one credit of an ethics CLE uh, offered if you were to attend and not only meeting Soul Bar Association people, but also you're getting a one hour credit. Free, by the way, price is right, right? So it's very <laughs> inclusive, just like the way SBA and HSBA are, Korean American yeah. Bar Association too. And yeah, and, and so uh, that is a good, thing to join and participate in if you want to, because everybody needs that credit. If you're a Hawaii practicing lawyer, you need to get that ethics credit. Um, now, we're, we're at the end of our time here, but I, I wanted to ask you, you know, we're, we talked a lot about culture and is there is there any words of wisdom, uh, Korean words of wisdom, cultural words that would provide hope and inspiration during the, these times in the world, Did the, you know, the difficult times? Mm, one word that came to my mind, Haisu Itta. Haisu Itta is a can do. <laughs> I can do it. You know, no matter where you are, what you do, what type of difficulties you may be facing at this point, I think you always have to remember Haisu Itta. That means I can do it. Can do. That to me is an attitude that needs to be spread out. I like the positive statement. And that's nice Korean cultural input. Thank you very much, Amanda. Amanda Chang, I appreciate you being my guest today and talking about being a Korean American attorney in Hawaii, which is really broad. It's really a great, great theme. Thank you very much. Aloha. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.